Hey everybody, good afternoon. I'm Dustin Strong. This is our Ask Me Anything Hour at Strong and Health where we answer all the questions that have been submitted to us about all kinds of topics, but it could be nutrition or nutritional supplementation or food. And we're gonna answer a few really great questions today. Actually, a really robust uh, group of questions. The first one was about uh, thoughts on a product called uh, Protandum and an NRF2 Synergizer. Doesn't that sound exciting and all kinds of uh, fancy? Well, we're going to talk about actually a company called MediHerb out of Australia, and that's why we've taken MediHerb because when I think of NRF2 pathways, I think about the education that they've been providing for many years and the ability to help people understand this. So we're going to get to that in a minute. We're going to talk about varicose veins, even more exciting stuff. We're going to talk about papayas, we're going to talk about male hormones, we're going to talk about protein sources, and we're going to start off with the very first question, which is um, from uh, David asking, is there any more nutritional value in elk jerky, bison jerky, etc., or are they just as healthy as Nick Sticks? Nick Sticks is a company that creates a very clean version of turkey and beef uh, sticks for you know uh, road food or whenever you just need to get some kind of uh, protein in your body. And the answer is yes, there is a difference between the two. Actually, uh, it doesn't make one better or worse than the other, it just depends on what you're looking for in your body. The thing that I like about good uh, grass-fed beef or organically grown or wild beef is that it's gonna be a really good source of healthy fat. The thing that is actually gonna be touted as a healthy reason to eat elk meat or bison is because it's actually lower in fat. So you can see where I'm not gonna say necessarily that that's a good thing because we have to have fats. We need essential fats. We have all kinds of macronutrient needs. That is your protein, your fat, and your carbohydrates, but the essentials we have to get are essential fats. So there is still value in getting it from beef and having a good amount of the fat in there. Now, on the other side of that, because there's lower fat, there's gonna be more protein. So usually in an elk or a bison, it's gonna be a higher level of protein, and you're gonna get a complete amino acid profile, so you're getting all of those essential amino acids that your body needs to be able to rebuild all the 50,000 unique formulations of those essential amino acids that create who you are. Uh, also though, in, in elk meat in particular, you're gonna get a little more iron and a little more vitamin B, so that's actually a good thing. So if you're looking for a meat that you're trying to get into your diet because you have been told that you're low on iron or you're anemic, that might be a better choice because you may tend to get better sources of heme iron, uh, which is gonna be a little easier for your body to use as opposed to going for cow. Or beef so that's a good advantage and of course there are other micronutrients that are gonna be in there like zinc uh, vitamin B12 you're gonna get those from all those meats but they're gonna be pretty high in bison and elk so pretty good choice if you're looking for those micronutrients um, so just a side note on this we did talk about liver last week because we had a question about that and the difference between a lot of these products is that the muscle meat isn't going to be as micronutrient dense as the organ meats so most of these products you're gonna get are gonna be muscle meat, and so that's why zinc and vitamin B12, those are gonna be in them, but they're not gonna have all of the micronutrients that you would find in the organ meats. That's just to kind of clarify that a little bit. So the next question is, is it healthy to eat meat? And why do vegans say it is unhealthy to eat meat? I should have hashtag vegans in this to talk about this. So, okay, and the question is, do we have non-meat sources of protein and what are the best? Here's the thing, it's a kind of a long story. However, when we're looking at all the information that's out there and trying to compel people to stay away from eating meat, we're not looking at all the different variables and really being scientific about the answers. A lot of people will do a lot of correlative studies and say, look, this was a correlation and these people eating this meat and they got this sickness. A lot of times when you see these massive studies like that, there's a lot of cherry picking handing and happening in there and so they're choosing the studies that are going to support what they're trying to say and they're ignoring those that are not. So we have to think about how things occur in nature. More importantly than any of whether you're eating meat or not is whether or not you're digesting the protein. It doesn't matter whether it's coming from an animal source or if it's coming from a plant source. We even have people like Dr. Gundry out there saying now that beans are gonna kill you and tomatoes are gonna kill you because there's a lectin in there. It's a protein. So really the problem is our inability to digest these proteins due to our lifestyle choices. So the most important thing is making sure that you can actually digest them because you wanna get all of the essential amino acids. 
So if you're trying to get all of your proteins from plant sources, it's a little trickier to get in a complete amino acid profile, so you really have to have a good variety. Uh, one of the protein powders that I uh, have used in the past that is a vegetarian source would include not only pea protein, but also sesame seed and pumpkin seed because we need to get a lot of different sources for it to get that. Whereas in meat, it's a little easier to get all of those essential amino acids. So the China study was one of the studies that have been cited over and over and over again. And there are multiple factors that have not been controlled for when they're looking at it. They're not looking at the quality of the meat, whether or not the meat has been injected with hormones or injected with antibiotics. They're not looking at how overcooked the meat is. They're not looking at the digestive capabilities of the people. So there's many factors to that. So there is a lot of nutritional content in meat. A lot of times it's more of a uh, reason of uh, choice that you don't want to eat animals. And for health reasons, unless you have a really hard time digesting protein from an animal, protein from a plant can be a little easier. It's more about taking that information and understanding that you need help digesting things. I hope that clears it up. I could talk way more about that for hours and hours and hours about why I would still do plant protein. Or, I mean, I would still do animal protein. Okay, any good books about male hormones? What do you think, Brian? Do we got any good books out there about male hormones? Here's the thing, guys. Hormones are hormones. Um, so it, you have to understand both male and female hormones, whether you are a man or a woman. Women tend to have, of course, more estrogen. Men tend to have more testosterone, but both have both. And if you really want to understand hormones, you need to understand all of them. And I can't really articulate one specific book that I would say is great for male hormone understanding because a lot of them are driven by people trying to say that men need to take in exogenous testosterone, which I would not agree with. I think that there are better ways to get balanced in your hormones. So I'll keep looking, but as of yet, I do not, I do not have one. Okay, question on uh, how do I pick a good papaya? Well, how do we pick a good papaya? It's a good question. First of all, if it's, if it's nice and firm and bright yellow, of course, it's ready to go, but I would get it a little green so that you can let it ripen at home. I hope that helped. It's a great source of vitamin C, whole food source of vitamin C, so eat some papayas. Okay, varicose veins, a lot of question about that. What can I do nutritionally? Well, here's the thing when you think about that. Varicose veins, you're gonna see them in people's faces sometimes, you see them on their legs, and actually hemorrhoids, the number one Google search term because nobody likes to talk about it, is just a varicose vein of the rectum. So all of these are signs and symptoms that you might be missing certain components in your diet. Uh, vitamin C, a whole food vitamin C would be very important because you need that rootin factor to rebuild the vasculature. That is an essential rebuilding component of that. Another thing, if I were to uh, try to try for myself, what I would look at is something called Collinsonia root. It's also known as stone root. One of the active things in that that they tend to say is a big factor in helping that is a magnesium phosphate that's in there, but that is something that I would look into if I was struggling with that. A couple of herbs that I might look into would be horse chestnuts um, and possibly go to cola. Go to cola can be very helpful for that, or there's a lot of research that suggests it's very helpful for microvascular healing and helping with the vasculature. So those are just something, some of the things I would look into for that. Ah, one last note on that. If you are getting those types of things, it is a good idea to look into whether or not you have a congested liver, because a congested liver can uh, be something that is contributing to that, so I would take that as a sign or symptom that I might want to check out my liver. All right, and finally, we're down to this last one. It's the Thoughts on Life Vantage Pro Tandem NRF2 Synergizer. Doesn't that sound like the thing we've all been waiting for our whole lives to keep us healthy and young? Basically, what we have come to learn over the last few years is there is a pathway, an NRF2 pathway. There's other aspects of it too, but I'm gonna keep it simple. And it has to do with your body's ability to manage oxidative stress, manage the things that are aging us. And when we are supporting this pathway, a lot of times it can help us out. And this product, it took me a while to kind of find the ingredients, but it is just a proprietary blend of a few herbs. Now, here's the thing, some of the things I don't like about this. If you look this up, and this is important before you take anything, look up the product, because it's stated on here, it, is, it has unsupported claims that it can treat medical conditions. That is something that I'm not crazy about uh, getting behind. There was actually a letter issued by the FDA that was warning uh, that they're suggesting that it can cure things like cancer. So anytime you have somebody coming to you and say, hey, this is it, this is gonna cure everything from your headaches to your hemorrhoids, be careful because they may have some reason that they're trying to get you to buy into that. Um, and so I also get a little suspicious when, they're, when you go to the page and it's offering for you to become a distributor or, or become part of you know, the sales team for it immediately. So we wanna to look to what are the things that our body needs. Now, 
herbs have been very helpful for a very long time and like I said I got a lot of my education on the NRF2 pathway a long time ago from a great company called Medi Herb out of Australia and so uh, the person who actually runs that whole ship and he's a brilliant herbalist is Kerry Bone Kerry Bone has three things I remember him telling me that he takes every day to keep himself healthy and anti-aging and when he spoke of the NRF2 pathway he had created something himself called Vitanox so in Vitanox there's a couple of different herbs that you may want to look into if you're concerned about keeping your NRF2 pathway because we're all worried about our NRF2 pathway now, right? We want to make sure that it's working. So in his formula, he used rosemary leaf, green tea, turmeric, and grape seed. So look into those herbs, it can be helpful. Interestingly enough, when I found the uh, formula for the ProTandem, they were using green tea and turmeric. So who can tell me a bad thing that's gonna happen you from drinking green tea. Can you? Let's hear it. Okay, well, there's a lot of great things about green tea, so maybe a little more green tea in your life would be a good idea. Uh, and turmeric, we're all heard tons about turmeric. You just wanna make sure you're getting a good quality turmeric. And this is another great reason why I am a fan of Medier because I really do trust the quality. In Australia, they actually regulate herbs. They actually have to hold them to a much higher standard, so I have a lot of uh, trust and faith in that. I'm going to be getting better herbs if I'm getting them from sourced from them. Uh, in their formula, they also had milk thistle, bacopa, and ashwagandha, all great herbs, all great herbs that have all kinds of benefits in different ways and different literature. I'm not sure that I would specifically put them into that. I'm not formulating it because I'm not actually trying to get a product out there to help with the NRF2 pathway, but my ultimate answer on that is if I were to try to do that, I would probably talk to Kerry Bone first and see what his thoughts were and follow his advice before going for something that's gonna try to get me to be a distributor for them uh, online. Okay, so thanks for watching guys. Tons of information. If any of this made any sense to any of you or if it was something that you felt is worth sharing or of interest or you think it could help somebody in any way, please share this video, like this video, tell your friends, and we'll be here on Thursday to answer the rest of the questions that come to us the rest of the week. Take care.